AMC Me. Welcome to my channel. And this is going to be my first video that I've recorded in a long time. And my first video for 2024. So if you know me, you know that I enjoy K-dramas and Webtoons. Um, I got into K-dramas because of Webtoons. And one that I recently finished got adapted into a drama starring one of my favorite actresses and I am pretty freaking pumped about it. It's called Marry My Husband and it's on Webtoons if you want to check it out. I highly recommend it. It's really good. Um, so it's the stars synopsis for the webtoon Jiwon and the she's a 37 year old the first two episodes that I've watched walks in on her husband and her best friend be pretty yeah. um, um, on par with the what's uh, worse, webtoon or, oh, which wait. I appreciate of course because it's so live action. the synopsis there's, for there's the webtoon like more, you can get more emotion and the K drama because from the first scenes, two episodes that I've watched, which I've really been appreciating but. The synopsis is when Jiwon, a 37-year-old cancer patient, walks in on her husband and best friend, yeah, she realizes her whole life has been a lie. What's worse, she dies a tragic death at the hands of said husband. Uh, would things have been different if she had made different choices? Fortunately for Jiwon, she is given the chance to rewrite her fate when she is reincarnated as her younger self. This time, she vows to live a happy life, but first comes revenge. Her plan? To marry off her former best friend to her lying, cheating husband. Okay? Like, tell me that does not sound amazing. First off, how great would it be to go back? How much? How to go back? 10 years? I think that's what it said. Yeah, right? Just her younger self. I think in the drama it's stated it's 10 years, but um, um, how, how awesome would that be to re, I know it's not possible at this time, but how possible, how cool would it be to go back in time and just pick another path for yourself just to see what it would be like, would it be better if you still had all that knowledge? which yeah I mean I would be I would do it I would totally do it um so as far as the cast I mentioned one of my favorite k-drama actresses is in it and that's Park Min Young she kind of had a little she had a rough time last year with her scandal with her ex-boyfriend which I forgive her I know netizens like roasted her and gave her a hard time and she like immediately broke up with him after it happened because she's not really in scandals so when it happened I'm sure she was like freaking out because they are brutal in South Korea to people in entertainment like that's like a whole other ball game compared to us over here in the U.S. when there's a scandal, like, yeah, we'll talk shit, but we're like, they're human, it's whatever, blah, 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 and get over it. But there, they, <sighs> it's just like, everybody comes for you, and it's hard. Some people, they don't get their career back for what we would deem silly things. Um, but yeah, she's played, I've watched almost all of her dramas except for City Hunter and I think it's Queen for Seven Days and I think it's Remember Me or Memorialist, the one where I think it's her boyfriend or friend loses their memory, but I've watched everything else from her. Um, fabulous, love her. Um... And she plays the lead, Kang Jiwon. Her crappy husband is played by Nan In Woo. And also, I should say, forgive me for my pronunciation, okay? I used to practice Korean on Duolingo, but that's been a few years now. It's been at least a year that I've actively when I was actively like practicing every day 
Um, he plays the crappy ex-husband, Song ha Yoon plays the shitty best friend, and she her character is Jung Soo Min. Her boss, uh, that her and her ex, or not her, no, he's not her ex, but her husband, they both, they all three work at the same company, and her boss seems to like have a thing for her. I'm not going to give stuff away in case you haven't read the drama or anything, but um, it's played by Lee Ye Kyung and he plays Park Min Hwan. And then we have some other characters. There's um, Yang Ju Ron, who's played by Gong Min Jun. And she's um, one of the co-workers of Jiwon. She's an older lady who's married. And then there's um, Yon Hee Yan, played by Choi Ju Ri. And she's another co-worker, but she's like um, younger, like entry level. Um, and then there's Bak Eun Hyo played by Lee J. Kwong. And from what it seems like, he was Jiwon's first love before she met her shitty current husband. <laughs> so the first episode, it starts with Jiwon in the hospital. And there was kind of some hubbubble, hub, hubbubaloo, which um, is understandable, but actors do... A lot of things for the to their bodies for their roles but um park min young lost a lot of weight because jiwon starts the show off in the hospital getting cancer treatments um i've been blessed enough to not know anybody that has had to go through chemotherapy but the people that i've seen you see that unfortunately like they draft rapidly lose weight they're very small very fragile so her losing the weight for the role it's understandable um but she's like in the hospital and it starts with her sitting there and then you see um a cherry blossom come in through the window and her best friend right when she's about to catch it her best friend closes the window and the cherry blossom just drops to the ground and her friend's like oh we need to close the window so you don't get sick we don't need you getting sick and you're like Ugh. well i've read the webtoon so i already know because i'm like "Ugh, this bitch um but it's it's zoom in her best friend i have my notes over here so if i'm like glancing over to the side that's why I'm going to try to keep my eyes on the camera like a good YouTuber, but we'll see. But um, she leaves, though, when the nurse comes in and say, hey, it's time for your treatment to Jiwon. And Jiwon goes, gets her treatment. It's just thinking about like she thinks a little bit like of her life and how things have been going so far and how it's just. Like, all the bad luck, basically. Um, we see that her husband's a piece of shit. Uh, he quit his job. So he could do stocks. So he could trade stocks because work was totally getting in the way of him doing that. Um, so she was the one to bear all of the bills. All of the responsibilities because he didn't even clean the door to their apartment was broken like literally any and everybody could just walk into your apartment and steal your shit and or worse kill you and he gave no fucks he was just sitting in the house chilling when she would be getting home from work playing video games and then when she asks him hey like you said you were going to clean up you said you were going to well first she asked she said, hey, you said you are going to fix a lock. And he was like, oh, I'm busy. I've been working. It cuts to him playing Tekken. The house is a mess. Dishes not done. Just just a dump. 
basically. And he like tells her, "Hey, just because you work full t- just because you work overtime doesn't mean that you're good at your job." <sighs> so, she's taken out oh, I forgot to mention, she's taken out loans for him. So she's paying that too besides like all of the other necessary things to survive <laughs> in life. Like also they show her they show her wedding. Her wedding dress is so fucking hideous. And her mom, she did that. His mom, I keep saying her mom, his mom, she did that shit on purpose. She was like, oh, I knew this wedding dress would look good on you. And like the flower in the middle, she still looked good. I mean, face card never declines for Miss Park Mignon. And, um, but the dress, just no. She, I know her character, she wouldn't wear that. She, she wouldn't have worn that if she got a choice. And from how his mother acts, she didn't give, she didn't have much of one, unfortunately. So, um, and then it cuts to her sitting at the table, like at their dining room table, crying silently because his mom's in the back berating her after she just came to tell them her diagnosis that she has stage four, uh, is it? I don't think it's pancreatic, but it's like, uh, basically like stomach cancer. I can't think of the technical term. It's like, it starts with a G. Um, I'll put it on the screen when I figure it out in, uh, saying, oh, it's fine. She just needs to keep working. You're going to keep working until you can't anymore. Right? This girl has stage four cancer. Your son doesn't do anything. And he's telling her, oh, honey, I'm sorry. And he's like, who's going to cook my meals for me now? And his mom's like, oh, she'll be fine. I mean, they have all kinds of technology to fix it. Disgusting human beings. Like, literally disgusted. I was pissed. And then... um. After that, she wakes up from her treatment and you see um, she's like going back to her, walking back to her room with like the little um, ivy pole for balance to get back to her room. And she's talking to one of the other people in treatment, but they have somebody there to actually care for them. And it's like her, a woman and her husband and her husband's there for treatment and he's, she's helping him walk back to his room and she's like, Oh, I know your husband's not here, but you got a great best friend. She's always here checking on you. She's so sweet. You know, we know. We really know. That bitch fake as fuck. <laughs> but um, she's like, yeah, she's so great. She has this great position at our job. Um, and everybody just loves her so much. She's so glamorous and pretty and every all this complimenting her and stuff. Um, and she gets back to, when she's going back to her room, she runs into a, one of the doctors and he's like, hey, um, you need to reach out to your guardian and tell them, hey, they need to settle this bill or they need to come and pick you up. This motherfucker hasn't been paying for her treatments while she's in the hospital. And it's come to the point where she has to leave or get him to pay. And she goes back to her room and she like keeps trying to call him. He doesn't answer, of course, because he's a piece of shit. But I should mention when she was talking to her friend at the beginning in the hospital, she was like, she was, her friend was like, oh, he loves you so much. And she says, no, he's cheating on me. He sent me something that he sent me a text message that said, I love you. I miss you. And then he quickly deleted it. Why would you need to delete a message like that from your wife? So she's like, she's already hip, but she's too sick and too stressed to worry about it. But when he doesn't answer, she gets a taxi to go back home to like get him to pay so she can get her treatments done. But on the, when she gets, when she leaves the hospital and gets in the taxi, she meets this really sweet taxi driver and he's like all sweet and nice and like asking her about her life 
and she's telling him like my life is basically it's shitty i hate it she's like i barely have a husband i'm dying and he was like don't you want to see it all the way through and you're like not really well she's also like well i guess what else can i do so when they get to well before then he takes the um he takes the scenic route on the taxi ride and they show this beautiful scene of on the street where there's just like both sides of the street are these rows of beautiful cherry blossoms um and when they get to the apartment she goes to pay and he tells her no no this is my last day being a taxi driver um keep it he was like consider it like a um allowance from your parent and he gives her um it's like like a ten thousand dollar wand and she's like mm, she didn't want to take it and he's like take it just please take it and she's like okay so she takes it goes inside finds out the door's still fucking broken this whole time she's in the hospital for treatment he still hasn't done shit so she opens the door house a wreck and she's looking for him and she goes because she hears him talking and she looks through to the bedroom and it's him and her fucking best friend in bed talking about her saying that, damn, is she dead yet? What is she going to die? What the fuck this bitch? Like he pulled out, he got an insurance. I'm going to insert a clip about all of this, but he got a, insurance policy on her he even told her not to get treatment basically telling her to go die um and he was like what the fuck is she eating what is she doing why is she not dead yet and he was like yeah i already got some money to get you a designer purse to her friend that he's laying in bed with and she was like when she dies we should get a house and he was like that would be great and she was like maybe i should just push her off a cliff and he's like, no, then you might get hurt too. And after that, she like, she want like bust in the room and she was like, you pieces of shit. Like basically as she should throwing shit at them. And they're like shook. They're like, oh my God, this bitch hurt us. And she was like, this is insurance fraud. I'm tell, I'm going to call the police on you. They're like hurrying up to get dressed. And he tries to put her hands on his hands on her. She's sick, dude frail like dying and he like puts his hand up like he's gonna hit her her friend tries to go up to her and she keeps grabbing her purse so she falls down her friend and then finally she starts beating on her friend telling her how could you do this to me i thought you were my friend i thought you loved me and all this stuff and her friend's like well we're gonna keep on living and you're dying so like just let us live basically kind of like what she said and she like starts hitting on her and stuff and he pushes Jiwon and she falls into a table and hits her head and unfortunately passes away 24 minutes in y'all all of this shit happens okay k-dramas usually are like an hour and i was like I'm like damn emotional roller coaster and when she like wakes up she's at work and when she like focuses and realizes like that she's like not where she thought she was gonna be or that she was dead so it's just like what's going on he, he I'm like he Ji Hyuk was tapping her like, hey, what are you doing? Y'all, why did she wear into his ass? And I lived, I lived. I was like, yes, girl, tear his ass up. He's a piece of shit. She fought him in work, at work, in the office, okay? In the office beating his ass. Because I was like, yes, girl, yes. Um, but um, her boss, 
um, Min Huan. He breaks them up. Uh, the way he broke them up, though, he shoved him, the boyfriend. He shoved him because they're not even engaged yet at this point. They're just dating. He shoved him on the ground. <laughs> the way he broke them up. And I was like, you did that on purpose, didn't you? I appreciate it. Um, and she's like, she's still freaking out when this happens. She, um... He like tries to get her to calm down. He's like, "Are you?" And he looks at the boyfriend to say, "What's going on?" And he's like, "I I have no idea." But you kind of feel like genuinely bad for him because you're like, he it, it's his former self. He hadn't cheated yet, so you're like, mm -mm. "But we know you're you're a piece of shit." Besides, even before killing her, you treated her like trash. So it's like, mm, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel, feel bad for you, actually. <laughs> for a split second, I was like, that's past him. He's nice now. But I'm like, nah, let me take you home. And he takes her home, gives her his um, coat, his jacket, his work, his blazer. And he was like, do you have anything to eat? And she, he was like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. And he was like, do you have any cash? you don't have your phone and she realizes she left all of her shit at work when she busted up out of there she went to her apartment and she's looking like oh wow okay and um she checked all of her food items in her fridge and they all said 2013 so she's like okay this really is real i am back in the past he goes to get her some food and gives her some money. After he leaves and she's settled, she like eats the, he got her some noodles and some other food to eat. And while she's eating everything out, she's slowly starting to piece everything together. She's making a list of like everything that she remembers from the um, future. And she's like, okay. All right. And when she pulls out the money he gave her, she sees had a blue heart on it. And Jiwon's dad used to do that to her every time he would give her her allowance. He would draw a little blue heart on it because he was like, I'm giving you this in love. And that's when it dawned on her that taxi driver was my father and he was like her, an angel and he's basically like seeing like everything that she's gone through and he's like giving her another chance because he wants her to have a good life obviously like most g good parents do for their children and she's like okay and then she's she showed when they showed the part with her dad that's when I bawled because my dad passed away and they made me think of that and like how much I missed him and I, I did, I, your girl was, I, I was ball, I was crying, um, sniffling everything, but that suit, that scene was really good. And I, I think that's when I was like, yeah, this show is going to be good. Her boyfriend showed up with her purse and her phone and she seen that her best friend texted her. Um, we're going to call her her best friend, even though we all know she's a little sneaky snake. Um, but her best friend texts her when she's seen her run out to ask her if she's okay. Um, and her, she, uh, she lets her know she's fine. And then she and, is it Ji, Ji Hyuk, Ji Hyuk, they go out to eat to, um, one of the bars or one of the little outdoor eating areas that they have. And he got soju and she went to go open it. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. But basically he was like, you can't have that. Aren't you pregnant? He was like, I'll let it slide because I've heard women are real sensitive when it comes to that. And he was like, you should get an abortion though, because I don't want to have kids. And it cuts to the scene where the mom it shows his mom again, like 
our line, our family line is going to die with him. You guys aren't going to have any more chill. You guys aren't going to have kids. And um, she was like, oh, yeah. I thought I was pregnant at that time. And she was like, mm. she takes the soju and pours some. And she's like, no, I'm not pregnant. It's gastritis gastritis I think that's what she said and she drank it and he's like oh he's like super excited and she's like but you know what are you done talking because we should break up and he's livid she like gets up cool as a cucumber hands in her pocket and walks out of the stall and he runs up to her and tries to like beat her because she wants to break up with him So, um, y'all, y'all pissed. Okay. Let me tell you, I was so mad when he did that, but she smart, our girl smart. She started yelling for somebody to help her and people that were in this food stall with them, they ran out and they called the police, the police assholes. They're like, miss, you can't just start calling for help, calling for the police when um, you get in a fight with your boyfriend. And she was like, he was like, every eight out of, I think he said like eight out of 10 women, when this happens, they always yell at us, why are you arresting him? And she was, he's like, you didn't even get hurt or um, anything. And she's like, so I have to be hurt for you to help me? And she's like, whatever, just give me a ride home. The police, not that asshole. He was looking at her, how much money she has. And she was like, if I quit my job, this I'm not going to be able to, if I quit my job, I'm not going to be able to sustain myself with this. And that triggers a memory from the future where her shitty ex, uh, Ji Hyuk, bought these stock that were freaking fantastic. Like, made so much money from them and she was like ha 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 and she that's when she thinks of like all the other stocks from the future that did really well and she was like so jin jin hook ji hyuk thinks he can do stocks i can do stocks better because guess what i'm i know the future bitch so she invests all of her money into stocks she's going she goes to the library like our girl she is on one she was like this 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 is a second chance and i'm not gonna waste it she goes to the hospital to go get herself checked to make sure that she doesn't have cancer everything perfect bill of health she just needs to maintain herself she goes to the library buys a whole bunch of books about stock quitting your job investing and while she's there, guess who she runs into? Her boss. <laughs> Min Juan. And he's like, you're not thinking of quitting, are you? And she's like, mm, kind of. And when she's replying to him, she sees that he has a, a burn on his, a burn on his hands. Um, and it's from yesterday when she was at work when she kind of freaked out <laughs> she ran into the break room and there was a electric water heater like the kettles the electric water kettle he heating up and she knocked it over and it almost fell on her and he knocked it out the way and some of the water got on his arm and he got a bruise and she was and she got a flashback from the her previous life where she actually got hit by that water and she had a burn mark on her hand and that burn mark is now on Min Juan instead of her because he stopped it from happening and she was like oh I'm so sorry that was for me right and he was like if you feel sorry then pay for me a meal and she's like okay and she asked him what he wants what he wants and they go out to eat and she's like looking at him at the restaurant and he takes his glasses off when their food comes because it's so steamy, which is something she did when she was in her apartment eating the noodles he got and her glasses steamed up. She like took them off and he took his glasses off because of the soup. And when he took them off, she was like, wow, he's, 
he's handsome. And he's like asking her how the food is. And she's like, it's delicious. It was, she, and while she's looking at him, she hasn't tasted her food. <laughs> that scene, that part was so freaking cute. But um, yeah, <laughs> it was so funny. They have really good chemistry already, which I appreciate. And um, when she gets back to, oh no, while she's at dinner with him, our girl, Sue Min, keeps blowing her phone up, like calling her. And she was like, you can answer that. And she was like, no, that's okay. <laughs> so they finish eating and then they go to leave. And before they leave, he tells her that, he doesn't want her to quit because she's a really good employee and she's more, I forget, but basically he gave her really good, good, um, some really great compliments and praised her work ethic and stuff. And it made her feel really good. And, um, she like goes back, she's walking home and he's like looking at her like watching her while she's walking away and you're like bitch you like her you like her you like she won ah, so cute but <laughs> but um after that scene it cuts to um her at work she, she's like going into work and at the elevator <laughs> she sees uh ji hyuk her boyfriend about to get on and she's like oh shit hell no and she, she like runs she runs and she takes the stairs to get to work instead of riding the elevator so she doesn't bump into him um and um the whole day at work she's just trying to dodge his ass she's like does not want to have anything to do with him and i do not blame her whatsoever but it's funny as fuck trying to watch her like get him to stop talking to her he like tried to throw paper at her he was trying to message her like on the team's app and she's like nah and um the one time he did message her he said hey i sold that stock for the company she invested in the previous night and he was like and i sent you the money to pay for his loans that she got in her name and he put them in uh, with the rest of the money that he, after he paid her back, he put into another company that she knows for a fact is about to be terrible. And she doesn't tell him. So I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I can't wait. I can't wait for that shit to blow up in his stupid face. But, um, <laughs> but, um, while she's dodging him, she's in the break room, uh, because the copier is uh, also in the break room area. She goes to get something off the copier. And she sees her her other co-worker come in. Uh, Juran. The older woman. And she's like giving a description of her. She's like um, the right hand woman to their their boss. Um, Min Huan is over that boss. So he's like. He's like, he would be like the branch manager and the other guy's like the manager. And um, she's like talking about how she got treated unfairly by their manager because he's basically this piece of shit. He's, he really is a piece of shit. I'll insert how he acts towards all the women except for her so-called best friend, Su Min. And, but that's only because she flirts with him the whole time because he's a loser <laughs> and um she uh somebody comes in to tell um juran that he needs her so she puts her coffee down and when she puts it down she puts it almost at the um teetering on the end of the table and jiwan goes to get it or she goes, she sees it and she remembers in the past when she tried to get, when she tried to stop it from falling, she tripped over a box of uh, copier paper that was sitting on the ground and hurt her knee. Uh, but this time, because knowledge is power, <laughs> she jumped over it and she stopped it. Like some old Marvel superhero shit, which was hilarious. It was funny. Um, but she's like, it dawned on her then. She was like, <gasps> 
so I really can do things that can stop, that can prevent thing, bad things from happening me to me in the past. And um, she's like, okay, okay. Um, and then when she was leaving, when she was leaving the break room, uh, she's seen, <sighs> I keep forgetting this man's name, Ji Hyuk. She sees Ji Hyuk coming, <laughs> looking for her. Her ass takes off again and running. She's like running back to her uh, chair. And when she's about to round a corner, somebody's coming with um, some furniture and she almost runs into it. But guess who was there to stop her from hurting herself? That's right, Min Hwan. And uh, he like helps her, makes sure she's okay. And she like walks away and he sees that um, Ji Hyuk was chased, was like following behind her. That's why she got hurt because she was trying to run from him. And I think he's like figuring something out. Because when they ran into each other at the library, he said, are you thinking about marriage? And she said no, but then she was like, oh yeah, I am thinking about marriage because in the future he does propose to her. Or in her previous life, they did get married. Um, and I think he's seeing that that shit's not about to happen. Happen. So she she dodged him then, and then she she went to go do something. I forget what else she went to go do, but she ran into him again, and she ran. But this time, there wasn't anybody to save her. And she, she tripped over something and she did her end up hurting her knee. And she was like, oh shit. So it could still happen just on a different timeline than it would did before, previously. So she's like, shit, okay. Um, so she goes, um, she goes, to, she like puts a bandaid on herself and she's like trying to think. And that's when she figures out stuff can still happen but it would just be on a different timeline. And then she went to go get some coffee down at the cafe at work. And while she's there, she sees this woman just come up and take one of the coffees that are sitting for people to grab because it's done. And this man comes up and he's like, where's my coffee at? And it's because that woman took it. And that's when she's like, if, and that's when she comes up with the, that's when she, figures out if something is there and somebody comes in to try and take it, it's no longer an issue for that person if it's a problem. And that's when she was like, okay, so... If I can get Ji Hyuk and Su Min together, I can have her take away something that's a problem for me. And she's like, okay, all right. And um, the end of that episode ends with them all going to a meeting and her friend comes up to her and I think she, I forget what she said to her, but she was like, oh, it's fine. You can go ahead. And her friend goes in and sits right next to her boyfriend. And they're like all close with each other, giggling and laughing. And then she was like, yeah, I want you to marry my husband. And they show the wedding picture from the beginning with uh, Ji Hwan in it but it switches you don't see it clearly but you assume that it would be Su Min and that's how the episode ends so good okay like um, I'm so excited for the next episode and I think trying to like do these videos and post them will help <laughs> with me um, waiting for the next episodes to come out since I started early Instead of, usually I will wait like a couple weeks so I can binge. And then be caught up. Or sometimes I'll wait until it's just all out and then watch it. But I got to support my girl. The ratings for the first, ep uh, the first episode were fantastic. 
Um, and then I did have things I wanted to talk about. Cinematography, that scene with her dad in the cherry blossoms when they're in that taxi, that scene was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, her friend, Su Min, I cannot stand that bitch, but her outfits, everybody else's outfits are just like, I don't care about how I come to work. I'm business casual. But this bitch, she does know how to dress. And her clothes are cute, okay? Like, all of her outfits, adorable. Uh, I'll insert some of the, I think, was it one? I think there's only, like, one outfit on here. But I did like her shoes. Her boyfriend. <sighs> From the actor that plays him, I heard he does a lot of comic comedy um roles so people weren't sure how he would be i thought he was fantastic i've never seen him in anything else that he's done i know he's in waikiki and i have that saved to watch but i haven't gotten around to watching it yet but he was fantastic i despised him <laughs> the funny scenes that he did they were hilarious they were pretty hilarious though so i see where they're saying like he comes with the comedy um the girl that plays suman I love her. I think she is so cute and adorable. So when I heard she was playing this role, I was like, ooh, let's see how she's doing. And she's she's doing a really good job as well. Um, she seems like she's like really enjoying herself because I've never seen her play like a bad or like mean person. She was in Fight My Way and there was another one that I just watched with her in it. And I can't think of the name. But I'll insert it in here. But she always plays like a cute bubbly person. So it's weird seeing her in this role. Um, the uh, <laughs> the guy playing Min Huan. Okay. He's hot. He is really hot. But I don't know if it's just because. He's trying to blend in because he's actually the CEO's son. So he got money, okay? But his uh, his <laughs> his suits look like they are don't fit him well. He doesn't look dapper in his suits and his glasses. They look like the glasses that you... Um, they just like they just look like cheap frames. They're probably like Armani or Givenchy or something, but they do not look good on him. I do not like his glasses. I do not like how his suits look, but he he's sweet and he's cares about Jiwon, our female lead, so I can bypass all of that. Um, but I feel like he's going to have a glow up, which I'm excited to see, and I think they did that on purpose. So I'm excited to see what he looks like um, in upcoming episodes. Uh, Park Min Young as Ji Won. Always fantastic. Chef's kiss. Like, my girl can do no wrong. She looks fantastic. Okay. I know she lost a lot of weight, but she still looks she still looks beautiful, as always. Um, she played the hell out of... Um, that scene when she cried, when she realized that her father, that her father gave her this gift to relive her life because she deserves more than what she was currently going through. Um, her, when she found them and she was throwing shit and she was cussing at them and she was fighting, she played that part too. And she she has good comedic timing as well so all of her scenes that were funny on point like hilarious the part where she's running from him <laughs> the part <laughs> the part where she fixed the coffee um the part where i probably wasn't supposed to be funny but, oh i think it was but when she fought with him when she came back when she came back from um after she died and um 
the unsettling scene when um, her boyfriend threatened her after she broke up with him. That was very, it was really believable. Um, and I was felt like I was there with her and she was like, you could feel the fear. Um, stuff I didn't like. I didn't really, it was, it was stuff that the characters did. It wasn't anything to do with like the show itself. It's just, I can't stand, um, her best friend, of course, Su Min. I can't stand her boyfriend, uh, Ji Hyuk. I can't stand Ji Hyuk's mama. And they haven't shown her on this timeline yet, but from the past, that bitch can kick stones, okay? Cinder blocks, not rocks. She could break all her toes. She's a bitch. All three of them are bitches. <laughs> and I cannot wait for them to, for uh, her to get her revenge on them. Mostly after just after this part, I'm excited for her to implement her plan to get her friend and her boyfriend to hook up. To get them together so they can mutually destruct together as they deserve. But... Um, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.